auction time this is the 4G series auction 4G01 it's a large leaf shaped blade made from heat treated Georgia chert 9 and 15 16 inches by two and a half okay heat treated to 400 degrees now this one I thought after napping it for a while that it was gonna crack in half on me but luckily it did not some of the other stuff I heated to 400 degrees was very snap and halfish but this luckily was not so it worked out okay now I did have trouble with some of the areas on here uh, down here at the base it's hard to tell which one's the base but this one for me this is the the bottom part here I lost a bunch of width so I made it a leaf shape instead of a triangle or instead of a teardrop shape and there's still some of the original heat treat surface there from the original big spall I didn't flake all the heat treat surface off so that looks a little bit more red right there that's why it looks more red okay so yeah preliminary sharpening all the way around it's not it's not knife blade sharp like like these I try to get these very thin this is pretty thin but it takes me a long time to uh, work it down as thin as possible so this is not as thin as possible it's not as straight as possible so just be aware I did get this one pretty straight on that side but this one gave me some trouble so it's not as straight as I could possibly get it okay Four G02. It's a knife blade, heat treat Georgia chert. Same thing. I think it's 400 degrees. It's from my last batch. 400 is a little bit too high. A little bit too high for Georgia chert. I'm I'm thinking because sometimes some of the pieces will just snap in half extremely easily. So I'm gonna I'm going to from now on stick to a range of 345 to 385 on the Georgia chert 345 to 385 and uh, the butterscotch is lower so the butterscotch is the four, 345 and the swirl goes up to 385 okay so this is just a regular knife blade modern looking five inches little just a tiny bit over five inches by two and an eighth I can make these pretty fast so that's why I end up making a bunch I only have to really work to thin down this one edge this one is thin right but it's not as thin as this edge I with these things it, t it doesn't take me a long time because I only have to concentrate my intense effort on one edge that's it everything else is pretty straightforward and I grind it from here all the way around down to here it's not heavily ground but it's ground enough so it's not sharp it won't cut you okay for G03 this is just a simple flat lancelet type Georgia chert blade heat treat from my last batch this one I tried to straighten out as best I could but as you can see it's a little bit steppy this material got a little bit steppy on me but it has some nice translucency I'll try to make more of these. I've got some requests to make lance blades for spears or lances. So I'll start making them like this, but just bigger. Uh, five inches almost exactly. Okay. I'm not going to flute these. They'll just be straight based. 
You can try fluting it if you want. I would not recommend it, but you know. If I make them thicker, maybe, maybe you could. Okay. You know, you can still use this as a spear tip or lance blade, but I'm gonna start making them six inches or longer. This was five, right? Yeah. All right. Four G zero four. This one's on video. It's a Humboldt style, and off camera, I went ahead and I worked on the base more. Uh, what what I found out is these ears don't flare out. I had them slightly flared out in the video, so I rounded them off, and then I made this concavity a little bit deeper and thinned down. Uh, one of these, I think it was this side. I thinned down one of the sides a little bit more. But the, the blade flaking, I did not touch that at all. That's all on video. I just modified the base to look more like a Humboldt. I didn't name it in the video because I wasn't quite sure if I got the specs right on it. And sure enough, the base didn't look quite right. Although some Humboldts do look like the one in the video. Uh, most of them look like this, or similar to this. Some have a, a much more narrow base with a notch in the bottom. So I'll make some more of these. I like making this style. I didn't make much of these in the past because it requires these long flakes. But now that I've got some muscle memory built up and some physical muscle built up, I can do the flaking. And I'll get better at doing the flaking as time goes on. All right. Four G zero five, same uh, Humboldt style. This one is three and a quarter. In case I did not measure this other one on video, this is a little bit over two and three quarter. This one is three and a quarter, a little bit over three and a quarter. Uh, both of these are made from dacite. The other one is black butter dacite. This is the gray and black striped dacite obsidian. Okay, I'll be making more in similar types with this type of flaking. There's several types with that type of flaking. Okay. Not only from the Great Basin, but elsewhere. All right. Four G06 box of bifaces. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. There's nine. These are refined bifaces, so they're thinned down more than just a regular biface. They're not fully sharpened, okay? Just preliminary edge work to get it regularized. Some of them have abrasions, abrasives, abrace, abrased edges. Abraded edges. Yeah, some of these have abraded edges. Or I knock down some of the delicate areas with the abrader. Okay. Three and three quarter. Three and three quarter. Almost four inches. They're different shapes. Whatever the stone allowed me to do. And this one was a 400 degree heat treat, but it was very delicate, so I did not go thinner with it. Yeah, this, some of these will snap easily. Like that one there is a 400 degree heat treat. It snaps more easily than some of these other ones. This one I don't know. I think it's a 385 degree heat treat. It's pretty thin. Uh, four and five eighths. 
a little bit of an issue in the middle with some weird consistency so I had to pick it out big old step fracture let's see this one three and three eighths a lot of these have good translucency a little over four and a half these are all Georgia chert except for the obsidian one a little over three and seven eighths and three and one eighth that one has a slight curve yes yeah, very slight curve and this one is a uh, yeah, black butter. Let me let me check. Let me bring it over to the light, a better light. Yeah, this is black butter dacite. Three and five eighths by a little over two and a half. Okay. Or G07, a box of heat treat flakes, large Georgia chert heat treat flakes. They are mixed. Some are heated to 400. I think like three of these are heated or four. Not very many are heated to 400 degrees. But when you start breaking into them, you can tell which ones they are because they're more glossy. But be careful with the really glossy ones. Be very careful because they will snap in half. If you're not careful okay so just large flakes they're gonna look bigger than they really are because they have small hands three and a quarter there three and a half three and eighth almost four three and seven eighths four and a half so you get the idea of what size these are Okay. All heat treats, so they should be relatively easy to nap. Okay. Some of them are thick, some of them are very thin. Okay. There's a combination of swirled shirt and butterscotch shirt this is the swirl stuff okay. all heat treat like I said in case, in case you didn't catch it all right. I'll get it in there I tend to I tend to overfill these just a little bit and then figure out how to cram it all in when I'm doing the shipping Normally these boxes are around two pounds, 11 ounces. That's the lightest one. And then up to three pounds, somewhere in that range. Okay, last item, 4G08, box of flakes, debitage, mixed heat treats, 385 to 400. Yeah, 14 pound minimum debitage flakes, heat treat, 385 to 400 degrees mixed. All right, so the ones on the top are the 400s. There's about a half inch layer. All these on the top are 400 degrees. Heat treats, so they're more delicate, but they're more glossy. And then the ones underneath, they're all about the same quality and size. There's no big chunkers in here there's a there's a few that are kind of chunky like that one but for the most part they're going to be flat or slightly curved they're just debitage flakes okay but they're big enough for arrowheads hunting points 
stuff like that. Yeah, some are going to be thicker than others. This is about the thickest I put in here. Okay. All right, what do we got? We got rules. Bid in the comments section under one of my pre-populated comments. This means that you will be replying to one or more of my comments. My pre-populated comments will contain the item number, a timestamp where you can find the item in the video, and a short description. I will like your comment if I see it. That's important. Sometimes comments are not always visible. It may take me a while to like your comment, but as the time approaches the end of the auction, I will check more frequently. Try not to bid at the last minute. I'm using YouTube's time tracker and it's not always accurate. It can be up to two minutes off. Please be aware of this. Yeah, and during the last auction, there was some close calls. I had to wait because sometimes the times on the YouTube comment tracking change. Not only is it not accurate sometimes, sometimes it actually changes. So it may be showing you late, one minute, I refresh the screen and it shows you not late. And then I refresh the screen again and it shows that you are late. So I have to wait. I'm waiting till like 9.05 or five minutes after the auction and keep refreshing the screen to make sure that this time is consistent. I'm using YouTube's time tracker because that's what everybody else sees as well. And that's just for fairness to everybody. Okay? So just be aware that YouTube's time tracker is a little bit off. It doesn't matter if you're not bidding at the last minute. But if you are bidding at the last minute, just be aware of this. Shipping is free in the U.S. International shipping is discounted but not free. I will add the following amounts. Okay, these are just basic guidelines. Canada is usually cheaper than everywhere else, although uh, it it it, change, it, it uh, varies. Uh, I've shipped to Canada more expensively with first class package than I have to Australia, for example. I don't know why. Sometimes it just ends up being that way. I guess the guy in Australia Australia lived in a urban area, and the guy in Canada lived way out in the sticks. I guess it depends on where you are. But anyway, in general, these are the rates. Uh, I'll let you know, if you're an international winner, what the rate will be. Okay? Uh, international rates often change also, just because of the local taxes or fees or whatever. I might need to, ch to charge more than this. Yeah, okay. I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, checks or money orders. I can also email you an electronic invoice that you can pay with a card. Winners will be announced starting at 9.01 p.m. Eastern Time. So that is 8 p.m. Central, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific. It depends on your time zone. The, the auction ends at different times depending on your time zone. I mean, it's 9.01 Eastern. Okay, I'm on central time, so for me, the auction ends at 8 p.m., so I'm checking at 8 p.m. People in mountain time, it's going to be ending at 7, and people on the Pacific Coast, 6 p.m. Okay, I will reply to your winning bids with sold, thank you, item, price. Please email me your name, address, address etc. to jackcrafty2 at gmail.com. This is extremely important, especially if you're new. If you're new, I don't have any information on you. You need to email me your information so I know who to send it to. And make sure you include your real name if it's different from your YouTube name. Uh, sometimes I'll get an email from somebody using their real name. And it has nothing to do with their YouTube name. And I don't know who it is. It's usually not a problem if you're the, if you're the only new guy in the auction. But I've had up to uh, half the auction participants be new people. And I don't know who's bidding on what unless I can see, see the both your YouTube name and your real name in your email. Okay? There is a more complete description of the rules in the description box. Yeah, down below. If you have questions, please email me. 
Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. If you are not able to reply or comment, you will not be able to bid. If you don't know how to bid or reply or comment, please practice on another one of my videos. I will work with you via email if you're having issues with comments or replies. Okay, so yeah, I'll check both my email and my comment section on the auction. I do most of my responding to questions in the comments section during the auction but you can send me an email it just takes me longer to check the email uh, because I'm paying attention to the auction okay sometimes I'll miss the email because it's in the spam folder once in a while one of you guys gets put in the spam folder I don't know why the email does it but it does it sometimes so it may take me a while to respond by email okay so that's it for the rules. This is my cheat notes. There's a more complete description below. There's also a demo on my Auction 3J. Auction 3J has a demo on my tablet. I filmed it during that auction. So you can see how to bid using a tablet, you know, touch screen. All right. That's it. Hope you, got a, hope you guys had a great weekend and good luck.